And now we can move on to our guest for this week from the Perth Wildcats. It is this man. Steindor out for Kevin White. He shot the ball with confidence right throughout this playoff series. Two minutes and 30 seconds oh. left. The defense went to sleep and Kevin White made them pay. Yes, he is a veteran of almost 300 NBL games, was outstanding during last season's grand final series, and has been a vital part of the Perth Wildcats' winning start to the season. Kevin White, welcome to the Dribble Podcast. Thank you very much. Appreciate you guys having me on. You're four months away from turning 35, and you're in your en- your 11th NBL season, yet I reckon you could argue that you're in career-best form at the moment. Career-high minutes and assists, uh, your points per game has only been higher once. What's the secret to the way you're playing this season? Um, to be honest, I've uh, probably staring down the barrel of retirement has kind of made me realise that um, life's a bit too short to kind of worry about too much. So I think um, taking a page out of Jesse Wagstaff's book and um, just relaxing and playing basketball and having fun with it rather than being so stressed about results. And uh, I think that's kind of been what I've learned and something I wish I could go back and kind of relax and relax a little more. Um, when I was younger would have been nice to kind of hindsight's a beautiful thing and uh, I think I've found probably the right formula for how I I enjoy playing the game and how I want to play the game uh, late in my career So so Jesse's probably the most relaxed athlete that I've ever met Uh, when you get involved (laughs) with someone like that uh, is it easy to just to to say oh you've won umpteen championships maybe I should be a bit more like that Yeah, I think um, it's probably not just the relaxed way he goes about it. It's the work he does as well. Um, Jesse's probably the the guy that is in the gym the most, um, on the court shooting the most, uh, and probably putting in the most time in film as well. And it's no surprise getting here in the last couple of years and being around him that why he's had success, why he's been a part of such a successful program. And um, why he continues to just, I think, surprise people. But, um, you know, what I see him do is behind the scenes that no one else sees is um, probably second to none in anyone else, with everyone else in this league. You spoke last season about how Bryce Cotton pulled you aside at one stage and said, Oi, shoot the ball more because I'm giving you the ball and you're in space. And you're like, but you're the superstar. I'm meant to give the ball to you. Um, <laughs> do, does, does it, do you look at it and think, well, yeah, it's, it's very different over here. They, they play genuine team basketball for success and it's not as much about the individual and worrying about how you're going. Is that a big difference? Yeah, it is. It's, um, it's massive. I mean, you know, uh, Trev used to talk about it all the time in terms of people making plays other than Bryce because, there's so many. I've never been on a team where you receive so many crazy different looks from opposition defenses, and that's kind of what you have to do to try and surprise Bryce a little bit. He's that good that he's kind of seen everything around the world um, and where he's played. But at the same time, for his teammates, you know, when people are just running away from you to go guard him once you made a pass, it's a bit surprising at first. Um, but then when, you know, you kind of sit down and look at film and, and have the confidence that your teammates give you, it makes it a lot easier to play uh, in this system and just enjoy that, you know, you know that teams have got to focus on Bryce. If they don't, he's going to go for 40 or 30 and, and that's fun to watch. But at the same time, you're going to get some shots as well. Athletes crave stability with game plans and coaches and, and just life, I reckon, because it makes everything so much simpler. You're on your fourth coach in four years. Um, it's fair to say that it, you've been thrown different looks, different ideas, different suggestions of how, how to play, different personalities as well, different game plans. How do you approach that? Yeah, I think... Um Probably throughout my career, I, I sat with Wags um, early on in this preseason, and we were talking about, you know, the change of coaching. It's he's only ever had it ha- happen once in his career. Um, I think this is the ninth or eighth coach I've had in the NBL. Um, the longest I was ever under anyone was four years at Devo. Apart from that, I've been had a different coach every year. So it's one of those things where, as an athlete, I think I've always been kind of prepared for it. Um, and it was a little different for Wags, but it was also, I think, a breath, breath of fresh air um, to not be in the same kind of grind and routine of um, going through another one of Trev's pre-seasons that he'd done seven or eight times. So, um, you know, it's different, it, um, but it's also kind of exciting. And like I said, it was a breath of fresh air for a few guys to have Scott come in and just change things up a little. Um, that's not to say they didn't enjoy what Trev did um, because they had so much success. I think any of them would take any 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 year with Trev um, again. 
Um, but just a bit of change and a bit of breath of fresh air has uh, been nice for a few of the guys. It's interesting that Scott mentioned during a press conference uh, a couple of weeks back that Jesse Wagstaff's ability to be in the the, the, what, the best player on court with plus minus at the end of uh, every game stood out to him. And yeah, the plus minus for people who, who may not be aware is how many what the difference is in the score when you're actually on the court. But when you look at the players across the league and where they rank, Jesse's ranked second in the league for plus minus, Bryce is third, and you're eighth out of the entire league at the moment. So it feels like Scott's game style suits you with the way you play as well. Yeah, it has. I think um, it, it's going to take a while. We've still got some pieces coming back in. I think Nord, like Nordo's played his first game last week. Um, you know, Mike has only played a couple games. We had Todd for a game and then he gets injured. Hodgie's only just got back in as well. So, um, you know, they'll... You know, there might be some more teething problems to come um, as this thing starts to really roll and, and all the pieces start to come back. But it's enjoyable to be a part of it. Um, it's enjoyable to be a part of a, a group that doesn't judge um, anything you do. We have harsh words and, and you hold people accountable when you need to. Um, but at the same time, it's just fun to be playing basketball and a style of basketball that's enjoyable. Um, and, it, and it allows everyone to just kind of play to their strengths. Um you know, Scott wants people to shoot the ball. Um, he wants people to be aggressive and try and score. And um, at the same time, it, it's kind of my job is to put people in spots to be successful. Um, you know, kind of just try and find a matchup or find matchups that are favourable to us and exploit those and try and just exploit them as much as we can. And I feel like when Jesse's on the floor, um, he does a great job of making reads um, in the bigs position. You know, to help exploit those matchups as well, and you know, defensively, it's it's just something that's always been kind of natural to me. Um, that's not to say I've been great all year, and I think that Cairns game, the start of the Cairns game, was a bit surprising to a few of us. Um, but at the same time, there was a group of guys that were able to get on the floor and actually claw that back, and it, it's you know, it's fun when basketball's played that way. How much fun is it being on Bryce Cotton's team instead of guarding him like he did for a long time? Oh. It is the best feeling in the world. And I think even some days I get to training and I look at him and I'm like, are we taking it easy today or are we going at it? And he'll just shake his head and I'm like, oh, no, not another day like this. <laughs> it's, but, funny. it's funny when you think you about it, on. isn't it? Like, it's yeah. ridiculous that you had him as an opponent for so long and now you're belting up against him the entire time during training. Yeah, and it's, and you know, like I kind of spoke about with Jesse, to see the work that Bryce does is... I think the other day he made something like 78 straight threes and Scott yelled at him from the other side of the court and uh, and he missed one and he's just shaking his head and guys are like, la- like kind of stand there laughing but Bryce is generally annoyed that he had made so many shots in a row and someone yelled at him. But um, to see the body of work that he does on the floor and the time he's putting in, you know, just to the group, um, you know, and being able to make this thing because, you know, most guys would think that Bryce would just, you know, I'm the superstar, I'll, I'll just take it easy, um, you know, kind of let everyone bow down to him. But, um, you know, the stuff that he does in pulling people aside, you know, yesterday was an optional shooting day and him and I shot for half an hour, 40 minutes and just stood there talking for the next 25 or 30. Um, there's not many imports that do that around the league. And um, I think, you know, what he's done already and what he's going to continue to do is, kind of second to none in terms of imports in this league as well. We've got to go back to that 78, po- 78 shots in a row because that's an amazing tally. Like, what was going on? Was everyone else just stopping and watching him at, at that point? Or, or were we all, did some people notice and some people not? Like, what was the situation? Take us through some it. Got, so we make however many, you know, you have your little shooting segments and make however many in a row or shoot however many shots. And some guys had finished their shooting, other guys... Uh, we're still shooting and there was just a group of us watching him. I think him and Jesse were still going. They do some shooting comp stuff after training um, most days. And um, I was standing there with my jaw probably on the floor at the fact that it was 78. And they were all 78 were like clean, like straight net. There wasn't any ring involved. It was just 78 of the cleanest threes you've ever seen. And then for Scott to yell out and tell him that he's got film, which probably surprised him as well. Um, the coach is yelling at him mid-shooting. Um, you know, it's just 
another day in the life of Bryce, really. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in a different universe to everyone else. I, he didn't play, obviously, during the, the grand final series last year, and that was where you had your big moment, um, where you, you just stood out 10 points in game one, 12 in game two, 14 game three. When you reflect on that now, how important was it to have a personal big moment in a big final series where, you go, where you're saying to everyone, you know, I can really play this game when, I give, when I'm given the opportunities to be on court for an extended period. Yeah, um, I don't really look at it like that. And probably having the amount of time I did at home with my family, my partner kind of called me during the playoffs and was like, because we, we had spent a bit of time apart. Um, she was still in Wollongong and we were obviously over in Perth. And she was kind of a bit struck for words and didn't really know what to say. And she's like, geez, I didn't even think he could play like that anymore. And, and it kind of surprised me a little bit as well when she'd said that. Um, but at the same time, that's kind of been stuff that I've done at training throughout the year. And it was just the opportunity arose. And that's what I know from being a Wildcat and from playing the Wildcats for so many years that, you know, um, you know, the game I continue to talk about is an Illawarra game we had probably six years ago. And I think four of the five starters were missing. Um, two bench guys were out. They suited up eight people and two of them being development players. And we're thinking, here we go, it's our chance to beat Perth. And they ended up coming out and beating us by 26 or something like that in Illawarra. And that just stands out to me as what Perth basketball has always been, what I've always known it to be and, and what goes back generations for the Wildcats history and I think that's pretty special and in that moment that's all I could think of I wasn't thinking about myself I was just thinking about the Wildcats and what they they're about um, what they've been about and, and wanting to be kind of a little bit of part of that now I would also trade all three of those games and the way I played for uh, two wins and a chance to to have a crack at a at the championship um, at, say it was two all or you know just to take that to a fifth game but at the same time you know I'll, I'll probably take me a few years to kind of sit down and be happy with the way I played because I don't think I did enough to to win um, a championship which is what we were setting out to do you mentioned your, your partner before is it a wife or partner uh, fiance, fiance. We've been trying to get married for two and a half years, and COVID continues to, to mess with that. <laughs> yeah, well, we had Mitch Norton on. He reckons it's going to be six years before he gets his his um, wedding finally done. But today, it's it's Tuesday, the day we're recording this, and it's your son's third birthday. You're in a different state to him. That must be pretty tough. Yeah, not easy. Obviously, you want to be around for those little things, and um, it just, yeah, I mean, we were meant to be on the road anyway, I think, when the original draw came out, so we were away anyway. I was expecting that, but, um, you know, obviously just the state regulations and state government man- government mandates just make it a little more, a little tougher for people to be able to be with families during these times, and for us, probably more so than, than ever, it's uh, probably a little more testing because we don't really know when we're going to be able to come home, so it sucks. But it is what it is. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, my fiance and I, Rach and I sat down with in the off season and kind of said, look, this is something we may have to deal with. We don't want to, but we were willing to make the sacrifice to come back and play for the Wildcats, chase and get back what we believe is ours in an NBL championship. And, you know, and this is the sacrifices that you make. And as hard as it is, you know, at the end of the the end of the season, if we're holding up the championship trophy and we're, we're putting another banner in the rafters, it'll all be worth it. What's it like in, in Tassie at the moment uh, where you're setting up? Tell us about your accommodation and how you're approaching the COVID challenges uh, and just trying to deal with life as, as you move around the country at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's not. Nice. Like, Hobart's nice. I spent a bit of time here playing in um, Siebel a few years ago, and we're in a great part of Hobart. We're in Salamanca, um, down on the water. It is a little difficult to, to kind of navigate your way around the COVID stuff, um, just because different states have different mandates, and then the NBL have also put different regulations on what we can do when you're moving state to state or wherever you are. And we've also sat down as a team and kind of and just spoken about the risk involved in us being very active outside our, our team kind of set up and team rules. I don't think anyone wants to be the person that brings it into the group. I don't think anyone wants to be the person that um, locks everyone indoors for a week or two weeks or however long it is if we um, someone does does get it. I, I think it is inevitable that it'll happen to the group, but it's just about trying to prolong that and stay as safe as possible for as long as we can because we haven't travelled yet as well. Um, and we do have a couple of New South Wales trips coming up that could really throw that into a spin because we can be as careful as possible. But the people around us, and as we've seen in New South Wales, we're kind of running a bit rampant 
over there and who knows what happens. So it's nice where we are. The hotels are good. Everyone's in their own individual rooms, big living rooms, kitchens, uh, bedrooms, all the washing facilities and stuff were here. Very similar to the hub last year, but um, yeah, it's just different situation because COVID is actually everywhere over on the East Coast and, and we're uh, kind of in the thick of it a little bit in Hobart where there's 400 or 500 cases a day. And, um, just trying to stay as safe as possible, really. So social distancing is always important. You've got Adelaide this week and uh, you and Dusty Hannah didn't, uh, didn't really understand the concept of social distancing <laughs> the last time you met when you are in Tasmania. You were nose to nose. Take us back to that moment. Yeah, just... Uh, obviously just something that happens on court I think he's a good player he's been playing pretty well recently and and doing a good job for them so I mean one of the things I've always found managed to do is confront someone or rub someone the wrong way uh, on court and kind of uh, being able to take advantage of a matchup um, whether that's to my ability and trying to take away something of theirs and used to be Jerome Randall used to be one of the the guys that I really loved playing and and just kind of trying to get under their skin or, or rub them the wrong way in terms terms of taking away from their game plan and I don't know if I managed to do that because I got thrown out of the game and Dusty went on to score 13 points in that game in the last quarter so I don't know if that's a good thing but we're uh, embracing the challenge of going to Adelaide this weekend and hopefully getting another win and just continuing to build um, and strive for perfection in a, in a basketball game which is very difficult but um, you know that's what we want. Adelaide haven't played since December 18 because of the, the COVID situation that they've been facing. It's an, it's an extraordinary an extraordinary gap when you think about it. Now, you experienced some of the quarantine issues last year. Is it difficult to prepare properly when you, your training's impacted, your ability to go out into the shops is impacted? Like, do you, do you think they'll notice it once they get back on court? Yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest. I, th- I think this year's a bit different where, like, it, we haven't even heard, to be brutally honest, we don't. We weren't even sure if the game was going ahead. We weren't sure if we were playing Adelaide, where we were going. Um, it was just kind of floating in the calendar that we could be going there. So we don't really know what they've done. Last year, we were lucky enough when we got to quarantine that the WA government helped us out and, and set up the facility and that kind of roped it all off and we could get in there and train during that stint we had early in the season. So it is difficult. Um, at the end of the day, every team's going to have their challenges and I don't think anyone's going to relax and take it easy because some teams struggled with COVID and haven't played since December 18. Um, we want to win. They want to win. And at the end of the day, it's our livelihoods that are on the line start losing games. So, you know, I don't think any of us will be taking it any easier because we're going to Adelaide and they've been in quarantine or they've been locked down. So who knows? Uh, I guess we'll just see what happens when the ball gets thrown up. And um, yeah, just looking forward to the battle and the challenge. And, and it's exciting that we get to play another game. We haven't had that, haven't had that uh, luxury of games just rolling around freely right now. So Yeah, it certainly has been a difficult fixture and we never know what's going to happen. There, there will be more changes that the NBL will announce in the coming days as we understand more about what the COVID fixture does look like. Now, if we go to the dribble MVP votes from last week, we gave one vote to Vic Law for his 17 points, six rebounds, two steals and a block. Two votes to Luke Travers. Scott Morrison said he's a jack of all trades and he certainly showed that with 10 points, five rebounds, two assists, three steals and four blocks. But it was three votes to Bryce Cotton for his dominant performance, 29 points, six assists, three rebounds and he's 19 points in the second quarter. Well and truly stole the show. Now, Kev, on this dribble podcast, we have a segment called this or that. You can't sit on the fence. You have to give an actual answer. And we saw key moments late in the final quarter in recent games where the possession arrow has come into play. Sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't with possession arrow. In stalemates, what would you like the rule to be? Would you like it to stay as possession arrow or do you prefer a jump ball? No, I love the jump ball. Um, yeah, I just it's always been something that I've enjoyed. Not that I'm that athletic and that if I, I get in a jump, I'm probably waiting for them to tap and tap it and trying to find the closest man to try and steal it. But um, yeah, I love the old school jump ball, possession arrow. You know, you can work as hard as possible to get the ball and it's just handed to the other team um, and they get it back in a tie up. Um, I just I think the old school jump ball is something that to be brutally honest I'm not even sure why the reasoning was behind taking it away if you're able to tie someone up I feel like throwing it up and having an advantage for two guys to compete for it is a healthy thing it doesn't slow the game down any different to actually taking the ball to sideline and throwing it in yeah so that's my opinion I would love to see it brought back in but I doubt that'll happen hey Brent well look thank you very much for your time today Kev we really appreciate it hope the uh, the Zoom call or the FaceTime call or whatever you end up doing for 
enjoy your son's birthday goes really well. And we look forward to watching you continuing to perform well for the Wildcats for the rest of the season. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, stay safe over there and we'll see you soon.